Your are maybe it's not talk like a pirate day, but we're talking about the 1992 Pittsburgh Pirates. It's Cutter again with another what if. This time we focus on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates were one of the original 16 franchises that started the major leagues officially in 1901. And Pittsburgh had a fa fairly decent sized success with winning things. They won a few World Series back in the 1900s and 1910s. But in 1927, those Pittsburgh Pirates fell flat to the New York Yankees in murderer's row. Pittsburgh would wait 33 long, agonizing years before they got to another World Series. And wasting talents like Conus Wagner, Pie Trainer, and Roberto Clemente, and Ruff Kiner, among others. They got back to it in 1960 against the same New York Yankees. They were a different New York Yankees team. Pittsburgh actually did what many thought was impossible and actually beat the New York Yankees in a World Series. Not just that, they were badly outscored somewhere in the neighborhood 55-29. When the Pirates won, they won close games, low scoring games. When the Yankees won, they blew the Pirates out of the water. That 1960 World Series is obviously known for Bill Mazeroski's game-winning home run off Ralph Terry with Yogi Berra playing left field. Yogi Berra, an outfielder? But Mazeroski, the first of two walk-off home runs to end a World Series in history. The next one would be 33 years later. The Yankees were blamed for it. Casey Stangle took the brunt of the damage because of what happened with his use of Whitey Ford. He used Whitey Ford only twice. He didn't allow Ford to start game one in Pittsburgh. He wanted to save White Ford for the fans at Yankee Stadium. And it cost him dearly. But thankfully, Whitey Ford's career would actually not take much of a tumble, as the new manager, Ralph Hulk, said that Ford can pitch whenever he wants, however he wants. Pittsburgh, unfortunately, went into mediocrity for most of the 60s. 1971, they came back to the World Series against the Baltimore Orioles, with a young starter by the name of Steve Blass helping Pittsburgh win in seven games and giving Roberto Clemente another World Series ring to hang his hat on. Unfortunately, Clemente and the Pittsburgh Pirates the next year would fall to Cincinnati in the LCS thanks to a blue bit of blast, if you will. Bob Luce never forgave himself for giving up that wild pitch and killed himself a couple years later. And unfortunately, Roberto Clemente died in a humanitarian act in 72. It would be easy if you probably say, what about the 72 Pirates? Should, they should be in the... In the what if, because you know, Roberto Clemente, maybe he'll beat Oakland. But of course, we don't want to assume that he would die that year. But anyway, Pittsburgh then had some decent moments in the 70s, but in 79, they took on the same Baltimore Orioles. The players may have changed, but the World Series didn't. Pittsburgh actually ended up being down three games to one, and a few contributing factors led to Pittsburgh coming back. Most notably, Chuck Tanner's mother, who passed away. Chuck Tanner, of course, was the manager of the Pirates back in the 70s. Chuck Tanner's mom died before Game 5 of the World Series, and he gave his mom a nice tribute, giving Pittsburgh a win in Game 5. And then six, and then Game 7, surprising a lot of people by coming back from 3-1 series down. Pittsburgh in the 1980s were kind of nondescript, if you will. But they did draft, they did draft a decent core of players. Bobby Bonilla, Jay Bell, and even like, oh no, they didn't draft fans like Barry Bonds, they got. Yeah, Pittsburgh did very well. Pittsburgh, in 1990, started a run of three straight NL East title runs. Unfortunately for the 90 Pirates, they fell to the Cincinnati Reds, who went who went all the way in first place. From day one of the season, they, were, they won the NL West. And those same Reds shocked the Open Athletics in the 1990 World Series. Now, a heads up about the Oakland one is that obviously that 1990 Oakland team is not going to be part of the What Up Series because, just like, just like I said, the kind of rule is the team cannot be in the finals. I do want to reenact the finals. That'll be for another time. But anyway, the rules. And in 1991, the Pirates took on the worst to first Atlanta Braves. And they thought they would win. But Pittsburgh lost Game 7 on home turf. 92 was 
Tumultuous. Jeff King won a new contract. Ang Van Slyke won a new contract. Barry Boggs won a new contract. And they shipped Bobby Bonilla to the Mets. But the Pirates proved their worth. One of their best starts in team history. And they, they just cruised along. Yeah, sure, the 92 Montreal Expos made a run for the, for the money. But unfortunately, um, it didn't work out. So the 92 Pirates won their third straight division title. Thank goodness for that. Oh, and 79 Pittsburgh beat Montreal to get the division title. But anyway, the 92 Pirates were decent, even without Bobby Bonilla. The key to that NLCS in 92 was Tim Wakefield, a knuckleballer. And his knuckleball brought Atlanta to its knees, winning a couple of games for them, especially game six when Pittsburgh beat the tar out of Atlanta. And then came Game 7. Pirates with a nondescript 2 nothing lead headed to the bottom of the ninth. Stan Belinda, a decent reliever, to close it up for Doug Drayback. And then wham, Jose Lind gives a, a critical error at the wrong time. And Lind won a couple of gold gloves at second base. A few plays later, it was 2-1 when Francisco Cabrera, the third string catcher at the start of the year, who only is on the team because catcher Greg Olson is hurt. Cabrera slapped a single to tie the game, and then sixth, Bream, who isn't the fastest runner in the world, came chugging along, and he s scored the run that brought the Braves to the World Series, the 92 World Series. Ironic that it happened the same day as the Toronto Blue Jays winning their trip to the World Series. It's true. Toronto won the afternoon game to get to the World Series, and Pittsburgh choked to Atlanta. That loss in 1992 had ramifications that you can think of what happened. Barry Bonds was basically wooed to San Francisco. Vance Lake was not the same player. Jeff King wouldn't be that bad. Jay Bell was okay, but in the end, Pittsburgh fell flat. In fact, Pittsburgh couldn't get to the playoffs for 22 years. In fact, Pittsburgh didn't even have a winning season. For 22 years. I'm freaking believable. But yeah, the Pittsburgh Pirates finally got to the playoffs in the late 2010s and didn't really impress people. So for this what if, it's what if the 92 Pittsburgh Pirates survived Sid Slid to win Game 7. They would take on my beloved Toronto Blue Jays in the World Series. Now keep in mind that the Blue Jays lineups Throughout the series is based off of the real World Series lineups from 92. Hopefully we don't go to Game 7 because I have to make major guesses. But anyway, let's have some fun and a bottle of rum. Ready to rumble? Blue Jays, Pirates, Game 1. Pirates, well, the National League won playoff experts to host Game 1, 2, 6, and 7 of the World Series. At Three Rivers, it is definitely a good matchup. You see the lineups for both teams. Bear in mind, no... Bobby Bonilla for Pittsburgh. Toronto, this is the real lineup for game one in Atlanta. And my beloved Toronto Blue Jays crushing Pittsburgh's fine powder. Dees and ah. Dees and 10 to 1. Dave Winfield hit an RBI double to score Al Alomar and Carter. That two run double. He did in game six in real life, but in game one, he does it here. Two zip. Nothing much happening. Until the top of the fourth when Manny Lee walks with the bases loaded. Jack Morris even, well, Jack Morris flew up, had a fly ball reveal. Jose Lind could not get the relay flow to score Candy, to stop Candy Maldonado. Devon White then fell up with a triple to score Kruber and Lee. 6-0. Pittsburgh had been one hit till the sixth inning when they finally came a little bit up to like Andy Van Slyke hit a hard single to score Vicente Palacios, was he a pitcher? And he hit a double to make it. Pat Borders got an RBI single for Dave Winfield. Joe Carter hit a triple to score Robbie Alomar in the eighth. Maldonado scored Carter with a base hit. Don Slott has a bad pass ball, and Dave Winfield scores. The Don Slott. Pittsburgh only four hits given, up, given them. Devon White with a pair of base, Carter with one, Winfield with two, Maldonado with Borders, Lee, and even Jack Morris with our boys. Dave Winfield had three hits, almost as many as Pittsburgh did combined. Jack Morris pitched the whole game, 115 pitches. Boy, he must have been tired. Two hits by Van Slyke, one by Slot, one by 
Palacios, the reliever. Danny Jackson only went five innings. They couldn't use Dre back because of game seven of the LCS. Jeff M. Robinson, Palacios, Dennis Lamp pitched for the 92 Pirates. That's a hard Game two sees a big change. John Odu playing first base. Joel Carter playing right field to start. David Cohn against Tim Wakefield. Pittsburgh says we need the knuckler. And yeah, that works. They went 8 3. I knew they needed the knuckleball. And events like hit a triple to score Barry Bonds and, and Orlando Merced, future Blue Jay, hit a two run home run to make it 3 zip. And then Alex Cole. Remember him? The guy who lined out to right field to get Dave Steep his no-hitter in 1990? He hits an RBI single to make it 4-0. And then at the bottom of the fifth, Don Slot hit an RBI double to score fans like, and Orlando Merced, another RBI to score Slot 6-0. Pittsburgh then got Barry Bonds a home run. There you go, Bonds. 8 nothing. Derek Bell hit a pinches of uh, Bases loaded triple to score three runs, eight three. Blue Jays there. Oh, the wrong part. Three runs for Derek Bell. David Cohn pitched four innings and didn't do that well. David Wells pitched a couple of innings. Remember, David Wells played on that team. Mike Timlin, Rob McDonald, Mark Radcorn. Pittsburgh got everybody from Cole, Bonds, Van Slake, Slot, and Merced. Well, the Pirates. Need something. Doug Drayback is ready to go. Being the starter for game three against Juan Guzman. And Pittsburgh with a big 2 1 win over the Toronto Blue Jays. That's amazing. Low scoring game. Dave Winfield got an air base in the first. Andy Van Slake in the sixth hit a home run. And Joe Carter mishandles a fly ball by Van Slake. Who's that Andy Van Slake? What a character. So Drayback goes 97 pitches and all the way for the win. Blue Jays, not really much. Juan Guzman went 17 and Dwayne Ward and Pat Hankin. Pat Hankin broke for that team? I don't remember that happening. So anyway, uh, Jimmy Key, pitch game four. Pittsburgh goes with Zane Smith because they're like, I don't know about Danny Jackson if he deserves to pitch again. But we'll see. Well, the Blue Jays come back and tied the series at two with a 5-3 win. Steve Grishel, the DH, scored a home run in the second inning. Then Barry Bonds with a double to score Alex Cole, 2 nothing Pirates. Steve Grishel grounded out but avoided the double play to score Pittsburgh their third run. It's 3 nothing. In this bottom of the sixth, Kelly Gruber takes the bases loaded walk to score Joe Carter. It's at 3-1. And then Joe Carter... With White and Elmer on, Crush was one the center field and gone. The Blue Jays win the game, have to leave 4-3, wow. And Pat Borders even hit a home run. So the Blue Jays were almost ready to go down 3-1. So Pittsburgh, not much there. Bonds and Bruchelle. Zane Smith went five and a third, but the loss went to Bob Patterson. Roger Mason came in. Again, Blue Jays, Carter with three aggregates, Gruber and Borders each with Well, Pittsburgh and Toronto 2-2. Headed to game five, Danny Jackson and Jack Morris. Face each other. Hopefully Jack Morris wins this one. And he does. 6-5, a close one. Joe Carter hit a line drive single to make it 1-0 to score Devo. John Olerud hit a nice double into the right field corner to score Joe Carter. Then in the fourth inning, Robbie Alomar with a fly ball single to score both Lee and White before Dave Winfield got an RBI single. 5 nothing Blue Jays on top. Don Slott, then in the top of the fifth, had a two RBI single to score Cole and Bonds. And then Joe Carter with a nice RBI double to make it 6 2. Hopefully the game was that. Unfortunately, after Hanky comes in, Fanny Van Slake hits a home run to make it 6 5. Joe Carter mishandles a ball by Don Slott. But thankfully, Steve Bouchelle and Don Slott both fucked it up. And the Pirates lose game five. And Slate with three, everybody Slot with two. Danny Jackson only goes four innings, and Palacios, Patterson, and Mason. 
do the thing. 92 Blue Jays, two errors by Alomar, two from Carter, one by Winslow. No other. Morris goes eight and third innings. The fact that there might not be a tomorrow, Doug Drayback decides to pitch game six at home against the Blue Jays. David Cohn obviously wants to prove himself worthy. And Pittsburgh does, 9-5. Dave Winfield gets a sack fly to make it 1-0, but Vince Slyke, RBI, made it 1-1, scoring Bonds. Jeff King gets an RBI single. Merced scored after Merced got a double. Then in the bottom of the third, Vince Slyke hit a single to score Bonds. And Jeff King with a triple. There's Jeff King. Vince Slyke and Merced score a 5-1. Doug Joyback gets a wild pitch to score Dave Winfield 5-2. And Maldonado in the sixth inning hit a home run 5 3, thinking, oh man, the Blue Jays are going to win this one. Not so fast. Seventh inning, Barry Bonds scores Jay Bell with an RBI. Jane Ward has a bad pitch, and Annie Van Slyke hits a home run to make it 9 3. What is it about Van Slyke? Devon White with a two RBI double, but in the end, it's too little too late, folks. Maldonado got a home run. White two RBIs, one for one. Cohen goes five innings and sucks it. Dwayne Ward doesn't do as well. Mike Timlin does well. Pittsburgh, four RBIs for fans, like three from King, Barry Bonds. Doug Drayback goes eight and two thirds innings. Bob Patterson comes in for one out. Blue Jays decide to go with a lefty against Tim Wakefield, knowing that Toronto won game four. So practically, they needed uh, one Guzman is understanding of the move. Tim Wakefield in game seven for the Pirates. Wild game here. Here comes Barry Bonds. Key throws the one one. Bonds into right field. This could be trouble. It's gone. Barry Bonds, a big home run, and the Pirates lead one to nil. Here in the bottom of the first. Here comes the Blue Jays. Runners obviously won't go. Bases loaded. Here's Winfield. And a walk. A terrible walk by Tim Wakefield. Manny Lee scores. It's 1 1. Here it's a 2 on the Joe Carter. Carter to center field. Fence light like trying to throw it. Alomar will do it. Alomar scores. It's 2 1. Bottom of the fifth. Here's the 2 on the Don Slot. Slot ground ball. They're going to let Bond score. And it's 2-2. Two -two. Key throws. Bad pitch, bad pitch. Van Slyke's going to score. And the Pirates have retaken the lead 3-2. Here comes Gruber. 2-1. Gruber. Bounces one. Left center. This can get away from the Bonds. Borders. It's across the plate. We are tied at threes. Candy Maldonado is ready to come in for Jimmy Key. The 1-1. One -one. Smacks it to left field. Face it. Here comes Gruber. It is 4-3 Blue Jays. Don Arud looking big. 2 1. Olerud dumps it into right. There's Lee scoring. Here comes Maldonado. 6 3. Blue Jays. Wow. Blue Jays looking good. Bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded. Pat Hankin now coming to pitch. And a breaking ball away. Lind walks. Don Slot makes it 6 to 4. Tight game here. Second and third. The 2 1 defense late. Defense late. Base hit. Here comes Bell. Cole is right behind him. It's six all. Pittsburgh's tied it at sixes. Runner in third. Here comes Gruber. The 1-1. One, one. Gruber, fly ball. This will be caught. And the Blue Jays had a chance at it. And Devon White is stranded 90 feet away. The Pirate. Lynn, right to Lee. And the Blue Jays will go to extra innings. Runner on second. Here comes Olerud. Ground ball easily picked up by the pitcher, and it's six all. Runner on first. Cole. Ground ball, and we go to the eleventh inning. Nothing much happens. Pirates. Slot. Ground ball. This will be inning number twelve. Runner on first. Alomar swing and a miss. Strike three. A big strikeout of Robbie Alomar. Pirates, Jose Lind, and a ground ball, out, six all. Blue Jays go down one, two, three, in the top of the 13th. Runner on first, here comes Bell. Ground ball, six, four, three, double play. Jay Bell grounds out. Blue Jays need something. 
Fly ball. Cole drops it. He makes a mistake. Devo's on first base. The pitch from Tomlin. And Borders is hit by the pitch. Runners are first and second. Here comes Gruber. Fly ball. Deep left center. Bonds catches it. He's looking for Devo. And safe. Devo score. He's on third. Runners on first and third. The pitch. Devo's going to go for it. They're going to take a double steal. They're going to score at 7 6. Unbelievable. Tagler ground ball out. Tom Hagee to close it out. Bonds. Fly ball to right field. It is caught. One away. Here's Andy Vence Lake. The 2 1. Vence Lake. Base hit. And now it's slot. Ground ball. Three. Six. Three. No. Slot somehow survives. And now the 2 1 to Orlando Merced. Merced. Fly ball down the left field line. This is catchable. It is. The Toronto Blue Jays are your 1992 champions. Unbelievable. They win game seven in Pittsburgh in 14 innings. And the Pirates are probably going to say goodbye to Barry Bonds. Like they could be pissed off and leave for some other team. What a job by the Blue Jays. Look at all those players on the right hand side. Look at all those pinch hitters. Maldonado, Kent, Bell. Tabler. RBIs two by Olerud, Winfield with one, Carter with one, Gruber with one, Maldonado with one. That big double steal. How do you know that? Blue Jays used eight pitchers. Jimmy Key went five, then Dwayne Warrior inning and two thirds. Pat Hankin went a, hit, a, a third of inning. Bob McDonald blew it up. Arcorn went an inning two thirds. David Wells picked up a few innings. Mike Timlin picked up a few innings. Tom Hankey was the closer. Pittsburgh, Bouchelle, McClendon. Wait, McClendon? Play for the 92 Pirates? Well, wow. Gary Reyes and Cecil Espe. Bonds got an RBI, but he'll probably be leaving town. He said he wants to leave. The Pirates used nine pitchers. Wakefield went five, then Patterson, Mason, Nagel, Jerry Don Gleeden, Palacios, Robinson, Bob Walk, three innings of decent work, and Randy Tomlin was the guy who fucked it all up. And the Toronto Blue Jays are your 19... 92 world champions. So there you have it. The Pirates made it a game seven, but they just couldn't finish the job. And the Toronto Blue Jays do still win the 92 World Series. And Barry Bond still is pissed off and leaves. Yar, matey. Yar.